with a sharp punctuality we can uh, possibly start and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the, the making of a, of a movie which is uh, of a short animation to be included in a, in a film uh, which is titled The Dark Gene. But let's go one step at the time. Okay, so this is uh, something... So it all started about uh, just over one year ago in uh, July 2013 when I received an email uh, full of very flattering uh, words uh, and uh, interest uh, signed by two directors working for a, for a movie in the um, German production company and uh, asking if uh, we were interested in a possible collaboration for the movie. So, of course, when you receive a mail like that, what do you do? <laughs> mm. So, mm, are we sure? <laughs> Is this not a joke? <laughs> do they really exist? <laughs> and they do, so that uh, looks better. But, you know, they talked about the plot they would send with a, with a mail, and there was no plot there. So, well, let's just answer and see what happens. Now, of course, what... what um, you really think is uh, something that you keep for yourself. And uh, <laughs> very professionally, you answer and say, we are most probably very interested. I don't know how I came up with such a sentence. <laughs> I, I just found it out in my computer and I said, okay, I'll just show the way it went. And uh, so we started with the negotiations. So the, the request they had was, um, a few minutes, uh, well, a few small parts of animations uh, of um, variable length of time between 30 seconds and two or three minutes for a total of six to 10 minutes. And uh, they wanted to show things starting from the genes and uh, going through to protein, through the, the brain system, the receptors in the, in the neurons and uh, all sorts of very interesting uh, um, scientific issues. Uh, the idea was that the, the film should be released in, uh, in the spring 2014. Uh, they are delayed, but not for our fault. And they are German. <laughs> so what we said is, uh, okay, we, let's say five to eight minutes. Uh, what we need is at, at the very, very least about 60,000 euros. That's uh, still a, a very reasonable price, we think. And uh, talking about this, uh, just a small parenthesis, maybe uh, in the Blender network there might be a, a discussion about how to price things for, uh, for private companies that ask for uh, uh, productions from, uh, from people using Blender. However, that was our request. Um, what the directors told was that the budget available for these animations was 15,000 euros. Now, 15,000 euros for five to eight minutes is, uh, is really not much. I was um, informed, now not that I want to make comparison, of course, but um, the, the word was that uh, for the making of uh, the movie Avatar, the price was about two and a half million dollars per minute. Two and a half million per minute. So they wanted, with 15,000 15, euros a few minutes of a scientific animation, not just an animation that anyone can draw, but something that was really scientifically correct. So we started uh, negotiating, of course. And, uh, oops. I knew something had to happen. So, so okay, I skipped the slide, but finally we agreed for the for about twenty thousand euros. And uh, the the producer, which is uh, this, is also something interesting. So all the interesting talk you do with the directors, and they tell you what you want, and they, the compliments and everything, and then you talk with the commercial people, the producers. And they are extremely tough. And 
I wish I had a, a, a commercial someone that could do the negotiation on my side, but uh, we didn't have it. So we had to do everything by ourselves. And uh, finally, one of the requests they, were, they, they, they sent was uh, this last sentence regarding the right situation. We want to be clear. So that was like, make sure we want to be clear. We claim all rights worldwide for unlimited period of time. Now this, um, of course, we, something we had to, to do to negotiate. So we asked, we said that, look, we are going to give you this movie for a very, very small amount of money. We are basically using uh, research money, which is money from the public to do this work for you. This, what we want in exchange is that at the very least, you, you provide this, uh, these animations uh, you, you leave them with us to distribute at our uh, choice. So that's the way we finally... So the final agreement, and it was that uh, we would make five uh, minutes uh, total with uh, three scenes for a total of 20,000. We managed to get a little bit more. Uh, the deadline was very, very short. It was to be the 31st of January, and the agreement happened in November, so it was like a three months of, uh, of, of work. And, um, and we would leave the, the, the rights in connection with the movie to them until the release of the movie, which in theory should have been before December 24. Um, but otherwise, after that, that would become too available for us. So we started, and we prepared a, a storyboard. We called it a storyboard. Now, please don't be offended. So that's um, what we were going to show. So we have um, uh, serotonin, which is a, a molecule that is uh, very heavily involved in the mood regulation. And it's actually the, the molecule which is uh, um, responsible for, for what goes wrong, or at least this is the view, uh, when people become depressed. So the story, was, uh, the story of the dark gene is uh, the story of a medical doctor which uh, is uh, afflicted by depression. And he thinks that there is something wrong with his genes, that uh, he is uh, um, genetically predisposed to this disease. And uh, he wants to understand at the molecular level what's happening with himself. And also he is worried about, uh, uh, about um, uh, transmitting this, uh, this uh, predisposition to his uh, son. And um, so he starts looking for uh, a genetic um, firms that can do genetic uh, um, analysis and, and say uh, w what's wrong in, in his uh, DNA to, to this. Um, the story, what we were going to show is uh, the, the serotonin molecule, the place where all these things happen, which is the, the synapse. Uh, that is uh, the points in which neurons contact each other in the brain and uh, the way the synapse works, uh, what the, the, all the proteins that are there, the way the serotonin works on the receptor in the synapse and a few other um, uh, things that happen afterwards. This is going to be annoying. So the work for us is uh, was uh, as usual. So what we do when we do a, a, a molecular animation, we do some scientific research. We we have to check all the all the the molecules, the cellular environment, and uh, we we go through the literature. We ask our colleagues uh, or our friends, or uh, we we search uh, on the on, online on, on the on the scientific uh, websites. Um, of course, not all molecules are uh, already uh, defined at the, at the atomic level, so we have to build 
some of the molecules which are more or less defined but not completely. This is a process called homology modeling and uh, it's something that we have to do. Then uh, we had to do some visual research, that, like uh, for uh, microscopic images, electron microscopy, uh, other uh, techniques uh, that go very much into the detail, into very, very small um, objects. And then, of course, we had to set up our, our, our uh, instruments. First of all, Blender and uh, BioBlender and, uh, and some other scientific uh, tools that we used. Now, um, um, just a few words about BioBlender. We made a, a talk a few years ago when we presented the, the program. It is a tool that uh, goes with Blender, uses Blender, and uh, it's, um, uh, it's made to fetch information, atomic coordinates from the database, and import the, the, the atomic uh, uh, information into Blender, uh, uses the Blender game engine to, to elaborate uh, conformational changes, and, uh, but also what it shows is not the atoms, but it's the entire molecule. So it builds a wrapping around the molecule so that you see a, a unique uh, shape which uh, changes while the atoms change underneath. And uh, on this uh, skin, which is uh, the, the boundary of the molecule, we map a few um, physical properties of the molecule, which are the lipophilic potential and the electrostatic potential. These properties are very important for the way molecules behave. So they are not uh, animal-like. They, they feel and they exert different uh, kind of forces. Uh, the, the world of molecules has a physics which is uh, is not different on a physical basis, but it's, uh, it, it's felt in a different way than what we feel. So, for example, in the molecular world, there is no gravity, there is no light, there are no uh, or these uh, colors uh, that we, we have uh, in our lives. But uh, there are other forces which are very important, which are uh, the electric forces, for example, the pH and other, uh, other uh, features that are uh, uh, are possible to calculate, but are very difficult to visualize. The, the idea of BioBlender is to make these uh, features visible and uh, understandable in an immediate way to the human eye. So BioBlender is a, is a very uh, important tool in, uh, in the visualization of uh, molecular um, processes. No, once again. So the first thing we, we had to, to model was uh, serotonin. This uh, you can uh, recognize. The molecule is uh, really simple. It's like uh, 20 atoms. It's uh, very, very uh, simple. Oh, no. Oh, yes. OK. So from the storyboard, this is the final uh, movie that is going uh, in the film. You see the, the, the molecule is really small, but it still has uh, some, uh, some motion. What, what you see um, going out are the uh, field lines, because uh, the protein has a, the protein, the molecule has a small um, um, charged part, which uh, produces a, an electric field that uh, exerts its uh, influence in the surrounding of the, of the molecule itself. Um, the, um, sorry, just let me, okay. Next scene is uh, much more complex because it is uh, the synaptic cleft. The synaptic cleft is a very, very uh, small space which is the point of contact between different neurons. Uh, as you may know, we have uh, several million neurons in our brain and each one of them has uh, several thousand connections to other neurons and that's how we elaborate thought how we, we feel the world uh, around and uh, the way we, our mind works. Um, 
So there are many billions of, uh, of synapses. Uh, the synapses uh, are uh, quite uh, well studied. It's a very interesting uh, uh, topic of uh, research uh, in the neuroscience field. And uh, we had to model a synaptic uh, space. So let's see if it, if it goes. Yes, it does. So this is uh, the synaptic space. As you can see, it's a quite complex environment. The, the place is crowded with uh, very many proteins on the, on the two sides of the synapse, the so-called presynaptic, the place where the, the signal comes in, and the postsynaptic uh, membrane, which is the receiver of the signal. Now what happens is that when the, the presynaptic receives the signal, which is a, a, an electric uh, impulse, it will uh, open a vesicle that uh, releases the neurotransmitter. In this case, it's serotonin. It can be um, glutamate, it can be NMDA, it can be uh, oxytocin. There's uh, several uh, molecules that mediate the uh, transfer of information between different neurons. Um, once uh, uh, serotonin is released, in this case, we have 6,000 molecules of serotonin being uh, flooding the synaptic space. And um, of course, this uh, was uh, not a trivial thing to, um, okay. So this is uh, the scene at the end uh, of, the, of the work, the way we, we rendered, the scene that we rendered. As you can see from the outliner, there's uh, many hundreds of proteins. Each protein is a very complex uh, um, object which is uh, uh, present in different forms, in different layers. One is a high resolution form with the texture map that uh, contains the information on the lipophilic potential and the retri potential. A low resolution uh, object for the, for the molecules that are more towards the, the background in the scene. And a bounding box, which is used to calculate the trajectory of the particles, which are the, the serotonin molecules, the sugar molecules, the ions, calcium, potassium, magnesium, all these uh, uh, small objects that run around in the brain. So the, the scene is, uh, is quite complex to uh, render one of them, uh, well, every frame was uh, about uh, 15 to 20, 25 minutes per frame, but uh, we finally managed to, uh, to make a, a minute of this uh, animation. We had to recalculate the the particle cache, I don't know how many times, because uh, there were always problems, but uh, in the end we did uh, get the work done. In the synaptic cleft, uh, the, the receiving part has receptors. So receptors are the, the proteins that uh, can uh, um, sense the presence of the transmitter, in this case of serotonin, and respond by doing something. Uh, what they do is uh, different receptors do different things. So the, the first one we see here is a, is a quite complex protein made of uh, five different uh, subjects. Uh, serotonin goes and binds in the junction between each two uh, components of the protein, and the result of this binding is the change in conformation such that these five proteins that were all closed like this change and open a channel. In this, this channel now that is open allows the passage of ions. Uh, ions ha are uh, charged, so they, they have a positive charge. This is a calcium ions, two positive charges. And, uh, when they pass through the, through the channel and between the two sides of the membrane, they induce a, a, a change in the, in the potential which gets propagated and the signal can propagate to the rest of the neuron and go on around and around. 
Uh, another protein, which is uh, also in the in the surface of the receiving neuron, is a is a different receptor, which is a small, much smaller one, that uh, uh, senses the the presence of the serotonin and transmit the signal to the interior of the cell where other things go on. But luckily, we didn't have to uh, animate those as well. So. So the BioBlender workflow. We um, developed BioBlender a few years ago. Ten minutes, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll be fast. And um, basically what we do since uh, we, we also try to develop a version of BioBlender that uh, works with a newer version of Blender, but uh, at this time they are not uh, really usable. So what we do is to, we have to import the proteins in the uh, old BioBlender, make the surface, uh, um, calculate the mesh that is the skin of the protein, calculate it for every frame of the animation, calculate the, the surface properties, export the meshes and each mesh with uh, its uh, texture map, import them in the new Blender version and use them as a as, a ob as object in the, in the new scene. Um, this will have to... Okay, the reuptake receptor is uh, very beautiful, but I will skip for the sake of time. Okay, okay, I'll show you the reuptake. I think it's the most beautiful scene of the entire movie. Look at this. This protein is a very well studied because uh, it's uh, the receptor for serotonin and is also the protein which is the target of one of the most um, successful uh, drugs, legal drugs, uh, which is uh, uh, Prozac. So Prozac uh, binds to this molecule and stops it from, uh, from uh, Oh, this is a Prozac going in, and instead of going through, it stuck there, so that now the receptor cannot take up serotonin anymore. So the, the result is that you have more and more serotonin around in the brain, so the more serotonin, the happier you are. That's why, <laughs> that's why, the, the, that's in theory how Prozac works. So that was the animation of the serotonin. Uh, let me see what I can skip. Something I had to skip. Of course, we had big problems. And the major problem was BioBlender, BioBlender, and BioBlender. So, please help. We have uh, <laughs> this uh, new version of BioBlender that, uh, that was developed as, a, as an add-on so that it could go together with the new Blender versions because the first one was a, a patched version of Blender that included BioBlender in, inside. Now, the, um, the major problem with the new one is that for very large molecules, the, the way the, the molecule is built is that for every atom, uh, the, a sphere is, uh, is uh, introduced in the scene and a joint, which is the chemical bond that connects that, that atom to its neighbors. Um, for some reasons which I still fail to understand, <laughs> Blender, for every object, for every new object you insert, it rebuilds the infamous dependency graph. And it starts from beginning every single sphere. So that means that when you have a protein with 50,000 atoms, your Blender will never be able to get it. I mean, it stuck, it stays there forever, and, and you, you can't get the, the protein inside. And this is a very number one major problem. The second problem is the uh, vertex mapping. So the lipophilic potential is uh, mapped into the single, uh, into the surface, and it's uh, attributed to the vertices of the mesh as a value that is then translated in a, in a series of render features. Um, apparently, there is a, a problem in 
uh, getting a singular vertex, so in having a, a specific ID for every vertex. Now, I'm a biologist, this is the way people explained the problem to me. <laughs> if, you, if you want more information, okay, I will send you to someone else. <laughs> so, uh, of course, we have this problem, and uh, what, I, what I did was uh, um, write it on and say, okay, this is a... Uh, and say, please, dear Ton, can you help? So, Ton was kind enough to reply, except my computer will not show it, <laughs> saying, dear Monica, if you have a public repository of the code for BioBlender, then uh, the, the, it should solve automatically. <laughs> now, luckily somebody was there around telling me what is a public repository because I didn't even know that. So now I know what a public repository is. Still, it doesn't mean that I know how to set it up. <laughs> which means that uh, uh, once again I need the help of the, of the community and I really hope that you will uh, 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 contribute. Of course, if we solve the problems that uh, BioBlender has now, we can think of any further development. I have plenty of ideas which I don't know how to uh, implement, but um, I'm sure it's possible. And uh, one of them is uh, to, to change the, the nature of the protein. So instead of making a, a protein made of a several thousand atoms, make a single object in which each atom is uh, imported as a vertex of the object and in which the, the bonds between the atoms are the edges of the mesh. Uh, of course, it would not be a closed mesh, not something that can have faces, but uh, maybe it's possible. It, it can have a, you can give attribute uh, specific properties to the vertices and to the edges. Um, so th that would, uh, I think, make it uh, easier in, in some sense and would make it possible to handle a larger number of proteins in the scene. That would be very nice. Um, then uh, what we would like is also to have a, a newer and better way to calculate the surface and the electric potential uh, field lines. And, uh, and there's uh, other, uh, other features that we can uh, think about. I mean, ideas are for free and I can have as many as you want as long as someone can make them real. <laughs> so... Uh, I would, I would uh, like to keep BioBlender as an open project with, um, with uh, things uh, growing all the time. Uh, let's try to make it look a little better. So what did we learn with this uh, experience of, uh, of making a movie? First of all, have, let people that know how to do things should do those things. Do not try to make everything. I should have really had someone to deal the business for us because we finally ended up doing a lot of work uh, for, uh, for a re really an amount of money that was uh, ridiculously low for what we did. Um, get informatic people to do the informatic work. Maybe they can understand each other, they, they even know the meaning of words, something that I don't always do, and uh, never underestimate problems. We were lucky that uh, a couple of weeks before the deadline, we got a call from the producer and said, well, if you need a week or two more to finish your project, just take it because we, we're being delayed ourselves. Now, they are delayed for several months, but uh, we, we got at least uh, two weeks more that, that uh, helped a lot. Um, now, uh, of course, the important part is, uh, as you see, it was like four people doing all this thing in uh, basically four months. 
So it was a lot of work, but uh, I think we managed to do something which is uh, quite nice. And um, the, the film should be released uh, in uh, early January, uh, early 2015. So look, uh, look for the movie. It's, uh, it's called The Dark Gene. It's a quite interesting movie, uh, besides uh, the animations that we made. I think it's, uh, we did see a, a more or less final cut, and I think it's a nice movie. Uh, despite the subject, I mean, who would want to go a, a film on depression? But uh, it, apparently it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really an interesting film. So please uh, go and see it when it comes out. Uh, if you are interested, uh, the, the web page for the, for the producer is uh, filmtank.de because uh, Germans slash the dark gene. I don't know why it didn't come up. And um, I think uh, that's all. Um, oh, here it is. Now, if we are <laughs> offline, I am allowed to show you in the room, not online, unfortunately, the, the final, uh, the five minutes of animation with the movie and the explanation uh, done by a professional actor. So if you're interested, we'll, uh, I can try to see it. But this cannot go online and cannot go streaming. So uh, I think, uh, well, or next year. It's uh, already four. Uh, maybe we have time for just one or two very quick questions before. Do you, you are not the, the first to mention the topic of uh, doing scientific research, doing really cool things with Blender, and then getting running into walls of problems with the development. And we should find ways, or better ways, or ways to contact, or whatever it is, to, for, you can get developers more closely to the scientists. And I know there are lots of developers, for example, in universities themselves, who are also looking for projects. And then they talk to us, and then they want to have a feature in Blender or something, which is far more difficult in, in general than, uh, for example, helping out with a research project, because you are more uh, interested in your work and having your version or your specific thing, and you, are not, or you don't even want to be responsible for making Blender releases. So I think it's a very good opportunity to get universities to connect to the uh, informatica department or the computer science department, where there's a lot of young, eager students hanging out who would like to code for Blender, but they don't know what for to code. So that's what we should try to do. Yes, I, I think this is a, is a good point, and uh, I have to say I never did really look uh, very well, very much into the Blender network, but I actually think that the Blender network might be the place for uh, crossing the interest of uh, different groups, no. both for the commercial and the, the research uh, groups uh, e interested in, in using, in developing tools, and in, the, in, in research. No. Like, for example, the, the, the idea of making proteins with, uh, with one object and uh, introducing features uh, on a vertex basis, on an edge basis, that's I, I think it, it can be an interesting project to develop for a university, an informatics group, yeah. I think. Yeah, we, we, we will talk about it and we'll find ways how to solve it, like with shop offers on the website. Or, there must be ways for it, but it's in my attention and I hope everybody's attention here too. So yeah. one question, really good question, somebody wants to know something? Did she not tell something? Nobody dares to ask a question? We saw um, very um, short video clips uh, um, of about one minute or more. That is the real time of uh, behavior of those uh, chemical Oh, no, 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 the, um, or, or no. This uh, actually is uh, very interesting. Uh, the release between the, um, the time that the electrical signal arrives and the time that the, uh, the next electrical signal goes through the next uh, neuron, um, it, the, the lag is about 0.6 to 0.8 milliseconds. So we, what we 
we rendered it in uh, one and a half minutes, but uh, the real thing is much, 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 much faster. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Monica. Thanks again. We're going to see the whole deck musical. What's the people? Ah, no, sorry. Uh, they will be in the salon uh, asking anything for developers, but it will go on probably until 5.30. You can already walk in and out there. And, uh, probably it doesn't fit to have everybody in the salon.